Welcome, time for some art fun. I think that the time has finally come for a review of the Etcher Lab Everyday Sketchbook. So stick around. Etcher Lab Everyday Sketchbooks come with this white cotton sort of fabric cover, this really soft gray elastic, and you are able to paint on the cover. It sort of has a canvasy type of feel, a little bumpier. I did a video testing this out and showing you how to paint on this cover and talking about how the different materials worked. But I've used this A5 size. This is just an ink wash uh, testing page on the end. I used watercolor. I've used Poscas and imitation Poscas. I've used acrylics. I've used a lot of different materials in here. It does have 100% cotton watercolor paper. It's 230 GSM 110 pound that was the a5 size this is the a6 size this one is 8.3 by 11.7 a4 not a6 my goodness the a6 is tiny so the a6 is 4.1 inches by 5.8 inches and that a5 that I just showed you before is 5.8 by 8.3 all of them have cold press paper, the ones that I have except for this one. This one is a hot press. Um, I did a test page here when I first started this sketchbook doing every type of material I could imagine wanting to use in here. <laughs> and I'm just giving you a slow roll to show you how they all look so you can pause on any of these and read what it says it is because I've labeled every single material so you can see. And I think it takes a lot of different materials well, although the Poscas do pill a little bit, just like they do on most papers. Uh, much better on the hot press than on the cold press, so bear that in mind. So yes, this one is a hot press, and what I did was, since I, I'm not done with it yet, but I'm more than halfway through, I paint this gentleman on the left here for you today while I talk about how I like the sketchbook. Because the material that I use most in here is watercolor, I am using my Regina's watercolors for this piece just to show you what watercolor does on this paper. And I used a cola erased colored pencil, erasable colored pencil for my sketch. And I do like to see the sketch lines. So just bear that in mind. I didn't pick up any of the pencil, try to get rid of it or anything. I kind of like to see it. I will tell you that originally this video was going to be about how forgetting your color wheel can be problematic. <laughs> <laughs> because when I painted this gentleman, I often like to paint my portraits with a mix of ultramarine blue and quinacridone rose as my base colors. And then I just layer skin tone on top of those two basic colors. So the blue for the shadows, the pinks for where I want it to be just warm. And this doesn't have an ultramarine, the set. So I tried to use this Payne's Gray essentially, and it really went wrong because when I put the Caucasian skin tone mix on top, which is a mix of yellow and red, when the yellow hit this midnight blue is what it's called, but it's basically a Payne's Gray, it turned green. So the gentleman looks green. <laughs> <laughs> just bear that in mind he is green I don't care I don't mind I think it goes really cool with the background that I chose the green ink background but this is going to be watercolor and ink and enjoy because I do think it came out really fun it was really fun to make so that's the first point about this sketchbook it is really fun to paint in here it is easy to lift watercolor off of here um, it takes a lot of water really well. I do a lot of heavy washes, especially when I do ink washes, which is at the very end. I lay down a heavy layer of water so that I can do a wet and wet effect with the ink so it can spread and do its thing. And same thing goes for when I use super granulating watercolors. I like to have a lot of water down so everything can kind of move around and groove around and do its thing. Kind of like you're seeing here a little bit, but much more water. And this Cotton watercolor paper, even though it's only 230 GSM, it's not 300, um, it takes water really well. I use both sides of the paper in both sketchbooks. I did it with the cold press and with this hot press. So the cold press, a five smaller size, both landscape, and the hot press, a four. Gosh, I keep wanting to mix up a four and a six. I'm so sorry. A six is smaller, a four is bigger. And this is the giant A4. And I use both sides of every piece of paper and nothing bleeds through, nothing when you scrub to lift something, it doesn't rip the paper apart, they will shred the paper the way some cheaper papers do. This, it, to that point though, this is not cheap. This is the everyday sketchbook. It's not the perfect sketchbook. In some of my prior videos, I misspeak and call this the perfect sketchbook. I actually thought that's what this was, but it's the everyday 
the perfect sketch sketchbook, my goodness, is even more expensive. Um, but this one right here is $38 sitting here today on Blick. It's about the same on Amazon. You can get a three pack with all three sizes. So from the very smallest, which you can use when you're traveling or just out and about, throw it in your purse, uh, which is $19.95 for the A6, uh, for essentially four by six if I'm rounding uh, sketchbook with 52 sheets in each book, by the way, 52 sheets of paper. Um, so 104 different sides that you can paint on. Um, that one though, it brings the average price down. So if you get the pack of three sketchbooks all in the different sizes, the average price goes down because the smallest one is just under 20 bucks. The mid-sized A5 one is 28.50 and the largest is $38. You can also get all three in the exact same size. So if you love the giant one that I have here, then you can get all three in the giant size. You can also get all three in the tiny size. And if that's your favorite travel sketchbook, I know that Miranda, my girl over at Alkali Creek Art uses the A6 in her travels a lot, and she seems to really like it. So the paper holds up really, really well. I understand why it costs so much. I understand why artists love it. it. It's actually a really cool brand if you're interested in it. I remember when it launched several years ago and it was really the talk of the art town <laughs> because it's made by artists for artists. So the idea is that the people who make this sketchbook get us, right? Like they understand us and they know what we need and they made this so that we could really enjoy it. I definitely think it is an extremely high quality sketchbook. I have no regrets about having it, filling it, trying it. But I have to say, I don't love painting in it any more than I love painting in any other sketchbook. It basically just doesn't get in the way, but it also doesn't add anything. Like it doesn't add any joy for me except for the cover. The main thing that gives me joy about this sketchbook is the cover. The fact that you can paint the cover, it holds the paint really well. I did this particular cover in ink and watercolor. And again, there's a whole video on that. I'll link it below and that'll probably be the one suggested at the end of the video. I'll make it the automatic suggested one. But other than painting the cover, once you're in the sketchbook, the best part about the sketchbook is that your tool is not getting in the way of what you want to do. A lot of people would say that is the best thing you could possibly say about a sketchbook. Like, what else do you want? That's the best thing you can say. And this is the ink you're watching, obviously. Me drop my ink into a super wet wash with an eyedropper. And you should know I use this green ink from Colorverse. It's the Delaware beautiful green ink. It's like a sea foam color, but because it is so light, it looks darker here when it dries, it dries lighter. I do drop some straight up black ink into the parts that I want to be darker. And I think it came out really cool. I'm really happy with this guy other than the green skin tone, <laughs> but I'm living with it. I'm, I'm living with it. I'm loving it. I'm over it. <laughs> I learned a great color wheel lesson that when you move, try to move a yellow mix over a blue, it's not going to necessarily work out well. And I did know that before I went in, I've done a whole video on color mixing and the color wheel. So I knew it, but for some reason was still surprised when it looked green. Don't, I don't ask me why, I don't know why. It's a really stupid thing that I did, but I loved it. And I thought he looked too much like a cadaver or something with just the blue and pink. <laughs> so I did need to warm him up. I just wish I had ultramarine because if I did, I would have left it ultramarine and Quinn Rose. And when they mix, they make a gorgeous purple called Rose of Ultramarine that Daniel Smith actually makes a premixed version of because it's so pretty. And I've done portraits before where I just leave it with the ultramarine and the, ro sorry, the ultramarine and the quinacridone rose and the mix, the Rose of Ultramarine. And it's beautiful and I don't need to warm it up with any yellows. And I just failed because I was trying to use my Regina's up because I'm on a mission to use them up. And that's what I got. I got green skin tone. So why you might ask, do I have any downsides or complaints about this sketchbook if my main takeaway is the paper does not get in the way, it lets you do whatever you wanna do, whatever your little artist heart desires, this sketchbook will let you do it. A couple of reasons. Number one, I don't enjoy, like get a that zing in my soul that I get when I use a Pentallic watercolor journal. The Pentallic Aqua Journal or watercolor sketchbook is my absolute favorite sketchbook I've ever had. Here you go, enjoy watching him turn green. This is the moment. Um, <laughs> I first got that sketchbook. It's this landscape style blue, navy blue cover sketchbook. It has a pen loop. I hate the pen loop. I hate the cover. I hate that it's landscape, but the paper, 
is so delicious. I don't know what it is about that paper. I've never found paper like it before or since. And unfortunately, that sketchbook is so hard to find. They do have it on Amazon right now, and they have it at my local favorite art store, Mininger's, down in downtown Denver. But occasionally, sometimes it's in stock, sometimes it's not. When it's in stock, I like to try to buy them up. When they're not in stock, I go home crying. But that's my absolute favorite sketchbook. I've filled one so far, and I wanted to try every other fathomable <laughs> sketchbook before saying, yep, this really hard to find one is my favorite. This would be my second favorite. So second only to the Pentalic, and that is saying something. It just lets you do whatever you want to do. It holds up to everything. It is really fun to paint the cover. I love being able to paint on both sides without fear that I'm going to ruin something I really loved on the other side. I love being able to use everything from acrylic paint to watercolor to ink to my grabby paint pens that are like my Posca dupes to luminance pencils. Every type of media that I like to use goes in here and it is a multimedia sketchbook so that makes sense. It's not actually called a watercolor sketchbook although most of us know it to be excellent with watercolor. So it's very expensive, that's a downside, but that honestly is a baseline expectation anytime you are going to get cotton watercolor paper. If you're going to get cotton instead of cellulose watercolor paper in your sketchbook, you gotta get your mind around the fact that it's gonna have a premium to it. It's going to be more expensive. So that's built in. I'm not aware of any high quality cotton paper sketchbooks that are vastly more affordable than this. Like for instance, the Pentalic to get this size would be almost the exact same cost. Um, the smaller size, very similar. The A5 was actually a little more expensive. I think the A5 was like 24 or something. Um, so they are expensive. I do love that they have a lot of pages, these sketchbooks, the Etcher ones. I love the amount of pages. In fact, if anything, I'm starting to feel a little antsy because I'm more than halfway done, but I'm not close enough to being done that this will be done anytime soon. So I'm kind of getting antsy and ready to try one of my other sketchbooks. I got a ton of sketchbooks for my birthday in my no budget shopping spree at Mininger's that my husband took me to for my 40th birthday. And I'm ready to get into a new sketchbook, but I'm not there yet. I've got to finish this one up. And it is motivating me to just paint, paint, paint because I want to fill this bad boy up and move on to my next sketchbook. So I hope that that anticipated any questions you might have. I hope that's a helpful review of this sketchbook. I think that the paper is phenomenal. I think that the size options are great. It does come in portrait, uh, which I did not know, or maybe it didn't back when I got these. Uh, so all mine are landscape, but I will try the portrait next time I repurchase. And I will repurchase. I'm just not in a rush to repurchase because I have so many stinking sketchbook options right now from Strathmore to, gosh, don't even make me list it out. I have so many, like Stillman and Burns of every type, a, a Fabriano, like it, it's never ending. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed this painting. If you did, remember to leave a like, check if you're subscribed. And if you're not, I would so appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. It really helps a lot. And let me know in the comments if this was a helpful review to you and if you think you might try one of these. Until next time, remember, create something cute.